NASA, SpaceX's most important customer, is certainly looking forward to another Starship test flight after the last explosion in April. In fact, in recent months, NASA officials have raised concerns with their counterparts at SpaceX that the company has missed milestones related to a lunar lander project worth over $4 billion US and a $53 million contract on technologies for fueling the spacecraft that will take astronauts to the moon, according to people briefed on the matter. The people also said the two parties have had disputes over budgets, including SpaceX's use of NASA funds to support work outside of the scope of the contract. This isn't the first time there have been tensions between SpaceX and NASA, nor are they so serious that they're likely to derail their relationship. NASA couldn't easily ditch SpaceX even if it wanted to. Most recently, in a sit-down interview amid the Von Braun Space Exploration Symposium, Watson Morgan said getting these landers ready for their debuts on the Artemis Artemis 3 and 5 mission, respectively, for SpaceX and Blue Origin, provide both numerous challenges as well as unique opportunities. I think we have great, great challenges in front of us, Watson Morgan said. Right now, today, I don't see anything that's stopping us, but that's today. She highlighted the significant advancements in rocket capabilities made by SpaceX as a measure of their ability to achieve lunar landings using the Starship rocket. That's the beauty of our model. We take the best of what our government does, our expertise, and then we take a leap with the technological innovation that industry says, we need to do this in order to save costs and make a business case out of this and give you the value and the good price that we are, Watson Morgan said. That's where it's such an engineering art in that we have to balance what they need to do to be successful from a business standpoint and ensure paramount tantamount that we're doing all we can for crew safety, and the crew is lock and step with us on both Blue and on SpaceX. Up to bat first for the HLS program is SpaceX with Starship. The vehicle is the upper stage of the two-stage rocket currently undergoing testing at Starbase near Boca Chica Beach in South Texas. SpaceX's approach to its launch programs, whether it's Starship or Falcon, has been a combination of flying, learning, fixing, and trying again to get it right. During a fireside chat moderated by Watson Morgan on Wednesday, Benji Reed, SpaceX's Senior Director of Human Spaceflight Programs phrased it as, launch is signal and everything else is noise. And really, when we say launch, we're talking about launching safely. We're talking about launching reliably, but you've got to launch, and you've got to do it a lot, Reed said. And the beautiful thing about the Artemis program and all of the different players and everyone working together under Artemis is that all of these tests and all of these launches and all of these vehicles and everything that's happening are all part of that signal of launch and test and go. Watson Morgan said her past experience as the Deputy Director of the Engineering Directorate at MSFC and more than 30 years as an engineer and manager leads her to fully support and cherish SpaceX's approach to getting its lander ready. However, she added that I would be remiss if I didn't say we're concerned about the SpaceX schedule for HLS and the concern is that our critical path even today goes through these test flights. SpaceX stated in a post on X on Tuesday following a wet dress rehearsal that they are ready for the second integrated flight test pending regulatory approval. Thursday morning, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service released its own statement noting that it formally reinitiated endangered Species Act consultation with the Federal Aviation Administration. We have up to 135 days to issue an amended biological opinion, but do not expect to take the full amount of time, the agency said. The opinion is concerning the water deluge system added to the Starship launch pad following the IFT in April. Watson Morgan and her team are enthusiastic about SpaceX's return to flight. They expressed their desire to witness approximately 15 to 17 Starship launches leading up to the crewed landing in the Artemis 3 mission. According to Watson Morgan, SpaceX's approach of achieving multiple objectives with each flight, rather than waiting to accomplish everything in a single launch, underscores the significance of these test flights. They play a critical role in the development of hardware essentials for the HLS program. Schedule for us is key, and we are working very closely with SpaceX on ensuring that this next test, making sure 
sure that they're ready for it, understanding what they hope to achieve from it, and understanding the risk. And they are all high risk, Watson Morgan said. In addition to the more highly visible flight test campaign, Watson Morgan added that the HLS program and SpaceX have been stepping through some of the development milestones needed to support the version of Starship for the Artemis program. We had a cold start Raptor vacuum test that was recently completed. They're also working on smaller thrusters. We're working through medical kit testing, training system delivery, testing crew displays. We've worked through how we're going to handle mission authority on the day of launch, Watson Morgan said. So, in parallel, while the world stage sees all these magnificent tests, we are working closely with SpaceX on all the mission-unique items and milestones, and that is going along very smoothly. And they actually haven't missed any of those. This week, they are conducting a docking test. It's a critical feature, since Starship will first have to be able to dock with the Orion spacecraft on the Artemis 3 mission, and then with the Lunar Gateway during Artemis 4. In 2024, Watson Morgan said seeing the propellant transfer demonstration is going to be a key factor. That'll not only demonstrate an essential piece of SpaceX's design for the Moon, Mars, and beyond, but it'll also call upon new assets for the launch company that have yet to debut. That's where we're going to get to see multiple launches from multiple pads go into orbit and transfer some amount of fuel between the two. And that will be a really key indicator as to their readiness level, Watson Morgan said. And once they get to that point, and once that is achieved, it's much smaller from there on out. Looking ahead to 2024, they will also continue working on items within the crew cabin. We're working through flammability testing to make sure with our oxygen and pressure values that we'll have for our exploration systems, Watson Morgan said. Checking that the clothing, the laptops, they're bagged properly, and what happens if something gets out. So we're going through all kinds of testing and SpaceX and internally to NASA and then combining our data. While Starship will be a very different vehicle from SpaceX's other human-rated vehicle, its Dragon spacecraft, both Reed and Watson Morgan said there is some overlap between the two. As Reed discussed some of the challenges they will face regarding lighting both while on the moon and in transit to the lunar surface, there are a number of lessons that can be gleaned from Dragon. We've been docking a lot of Dragon to the space station. We've flown Dragon through a number of lighting conditions as we go through the LEO orbit, whether it's going to the space station or some of our free flyer missions, Reed said. We've had a lot of opportunities to develop that. Watson Morgan said while standing up the HLS program that it was important to garner expertise from the Commercial Crew Program, or CCP, for which the Dragon transports astronauts to and from the International Space Station. I received a lot of good advice to try to keep your program office small, to keep some pointed experts up there, and to be very close to the decision making. And I have followed suit with that's exactly how we're set up, Watson Morgan said. We're growing, and it's hard, and I'll tell you, some of the days are just so long, but I do think that that has served us well to date. She added that as they were developing the contracts for the HLS program, they borrowed another item from the commercial crew program, having unfettered access to the contractors and the providers' base data so we can go search it, and if we can't find it, we ask, hey, we need to know where this is. And they're a lot more responsive because in the commercial crew days, all that was kind of new, and so there was a lot of searching to try to get the information, Watson Morgan said. Because if we can get that data to our civil servants, to our government team who has a lot of the expertise, then we can say, yes, this is acceptable. Use as is or no, we need to material review board this and we need to determine whether or not it is still usable. Both SpaceX and Blue Origin are off to the races with their landers, but the clock is ticking before they're needed to be called up. Watson Morgan doesn't look past the practical hurdles that lie ahead for both landers, but remains confident that the thorough work being done for both will carry the day in the end. During her panel appearance on Wednesday, Watson Morgan emphasized that NASA's approach with this partnership is different from other undertakings when it comes to helping commercialize the moon. She said, to be successful, they need to get very deep down into how they are doing things and to do that work up front. We do it up front so there are no questions or concerns or confusion as to how the system should be built in order for, later on, for our team to come in and be able to human rate the system. 
Watson Morgan said. So it's super challenging, it's super exciting, and all the time I get asked how do you sleep at night, and I'm gonna tell you, I sleep very well because I take it one day at a time. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much everybody for watching, and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.